Hey guys, uh, welcome to my very first YouTube video. I'm super excited to share what God's put on my heart recently. Um, if you can't tell, I'm in my car. Um, I've been working on doing this video for a few days now and time after time again uh, distraction just came up and it, it wasn't working and so I just asked God what what do you need me to do to get this message across to others and so he kind of just told me you just need to get away from the distractions and that's what I did so I'm sitting here in my car it's currently raining in Coos Bay so that's a another fun addition to the video um, but yeah I'm just super excited um, recently I've really been thinking about just the meaning of words and I actually had a devotional the other day with one of my really good mentors and she talked about Proverbs 16 24 pleasant words are a honeycomb sweet to the taste and health to the body and so that was really just affirmation of you know me speaking about words today particularly one um, that we're gonna dive into but I think it's just super awesome you know the words that God provides us with and they have great meaning and I just kind of want to talk about that so bear with me I have quite a few notes um, I want to kind of stick to what I've already gone over and you know spoken to the Lord about um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited to see where this conversation goes and we're going to just jump right in. So the word for today is intentionality. Intentionality is a noun and it is the fact of being deliberate or purposeful. It's also the quality of mental states, which can be thoughts, beliefs, desires, and hopes that consists in their being directed towards some object or state of affairs. So... Basically, today we're going to go into three different sections of intentionality, but ultimately we're going to talk about biblical intentionality. Um, biblical intention is making a daily choice to have faith and to glorify God, so we'll talk more about how we can do that, um, but I want to talk a little bit about your purpose, because when we think of intentionality, we often think of our purpose, and truly everyone has a different calling whether it be career, family, service, ministry, whatever it is. Um, but everyone is called to live for God and to glorify Him, and that is our purpose as, as God's people, is to just glorify Him in everything we do and to have faith. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, but I want to start with um, sharing a few little tidbits of things that people shared when I asked them, what does intentionality mean to you? Um, the first person said, to do something intentionally to me means to not only be purposeful and deliberate with my actions, but also my plan. I personally do not think any individual can be intentional without first thinking of their desired outcome or results. I think it's super important to just realize that we have to be purposeful and deliberate in how we pursue God. Um, and this person kind of talked about a desired outcome or result, which I think is life with Jesus and how, how we're wanting to love others, how we share his word, how we just live for him. That's the desired outcome. And we'll talk a little bit more about intentions um, just in our daily lives, but I think it's important to kind of set our mind on that desired outcome of living for God. The next one says living with a purpose. God creates our purpose and truly even even when we're pursuing a career or you know a relationship or anything the only thing that will fulfill that purpose and that sense of belonging is having a relationship with Jesus. And I think that's sometimes hard because we, you know, we want to go after our goals and things in life and we think that that's the only way we're going to, you know, find purpose. But if we take a step back and realize that God is the only one that can fulfill that, then that's that's really freeing to kind of know that 
that purpose is already set in stone and we don't have to accomplish, you know, certain things to, to make it to that. The last little uh, response I want to share is everything. Um, this person just said intentionality means everything to them. And that's, that's really important because everything we do, everyone we come in contact with, they're affected by our intentions. Um, we're going to talk more about our relationship with God and relationship with others, but each of those things are really affected by the way, you know, we go about things, our intentions behind certain things. So with that being said, I want to dive right into God's intentionality. And when I think of God's intentionality, I immediately think of Psalms 139, 13 through 16. Um, I'm going to kind of break this down and talk a little bit more about the pieces, but Ultimately, this scripture talks about the intention behind our creation, behind our design. And I think that's super beautiful um, just to, you know, think about God's intention, both how he made us physically and then also how he has created our life and um, who you are. So the first part says, for it was you who created my inward parts. This part kind of just talks about the intricacy of our anatomy. I mean, even just as human beings, we are created so intentionally and so beautifully by God. Um, you know, every little piece of you works in a certain way for a reason. Um, and each piece of you was created by God for a purpose. So I think that's, that's really beautiful to think about, especially when we're talking about disabilities or weaknesses, because you know, a lot of times we look down on these things, even in ourselves, and it's important to kind of look at it from God's perspective and think, you know, this thing that I may not, you know, like about myself, I might be insecure, I might be, you know, worried about something that doesn't work right. To God, that could be a strength or a calling, you know, to, to reach others and um, just be be kind to others who may face, you know, similar things. So Jesus made each piece of you with intention and for a reason. So just find peace in that. Um, okay. So the next part is you knit me together in my mother's womb. This is a super, super encouraging verse to just know that you were not an accident and God knew who you were going to be before anyone else knew. You know, even your parents, when they found out that they were, you know, going to have you, um, God God had already planned that, and he has already knit you, knit you together piece by piece. And I, I really think that childbirth is beautiful. You know, pregnancy, I think it's, it's such a beautiful creation of God. And ultimately, you're a miracle just to, you know, even be here living, breathing. Um, so, you know, when you're, when you're feeling kind of insecure, just know that, that God, the creator of everything, knit you together in your mother's room, specifically you. So that's pretty cool. Um, the next part says, I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You were made like no other. I, how cool is that? I mean, I... I understand sometimes it's hard to, you know, realize your your uniqueness and to really celebrate that, but God calls you good. You were made in the image of God, which, you know, our creator is amazing. So just being made in his image is such an honor and we have to we have to celebrate that and be thankful for God's intention behind, you know, who we were made to be. And then the last little piece I'm going to read says, Your eyes saw me when I was formless. All my days were written in your book and planned before a single one of them began. I find so much joy in knowing that God has a plan and that I don't have to worry about it. I am such a planner and I really struggle with, you know, changed plans and not knowing what's happening next. But this, this scripture is really, really helpful to me to realize that God knew exactly who I was going to be and everything in my life from the very beginning. You know, he, he planned that. He knows he's so intentional with our lives. Um, so nothing surprises him. You know, it's, it's hard trying to be the perfect Christian. 
I know that from, you know, experience. I'm such a perfectionist. I'll be the first one to tell you that. Um, but just knowing that I can't mess up God's plan for me is so, so freeing. I mean, it, he's just so intentional with, with every piece of our life that we don't have to worry about, you know, messing it up. And truthfully, it's just really, really special to know that God knows my name. He knows Natalie Osborne. He knows everything that I am, everything he's called me to be. And so I don't have to stress about it. You know, it's, it's, God is such a good God. He, he's got it all taken care of. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, ultimately, God's intention gives us both purpose and direction. And like I kind of said, that eliminates the the need to have the perfect life because it's not going to be perfect but you know in God's in God's plan it is so you know you may go through you know struggles and pain but it it's perfect in God's eyes and he's got it completely taken care of um i want to talk a little bit about kind of what God's intentions are for our lives um, God wants to instill love. Galatians 5.14 says, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. God wants us to love like he loves. And he He places that in our lives. Um, like in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. His intentions are so pure. And he, you know, everything that he does and everything that he says is to help us. Um, and so th with that... Um, I think we sometimes really struggle to understand where our pain and suffering come from. You know, I, I have been one to say, you know, why, why me, God? Why, why am I struggling with this? For those of you who don't know, um, I've been battling a pretty bad back injury, which is, you know, affecting my life in a lot of different ways. And I, for a while, I just said, God, why? Why me? Why are you punishing me for, you know... I, I'm trying to be faithful to you. Why are you putting me through this? But now I kind of have a little different perspective on that because I realize that God is using that pain and suffering to help me grow. You know, he, he has a plan for each of these things that you're going through and it's never without purpose. So that's important to realize. Um, one of my very favorite verses in the entire Bible is Romans 8.18. For the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed. God's not an angry God. He's taking care of you. He's working behind the scenes even when you don't know it. So just just remember that he's not, he's not punishing you. He's not putting you through these challenges because he's angry. He is doing it for your good. Like I, you know, like I talked about, his intention is so so good and he he has a purpose for everything you're going through um another thing that i think i kind of god was kind of speaking to me about this but it's kind of interesting that you don't usually hear um but god's commands in the bible are not punishments you know as soon as we can kind of realize his intentions behind everything i think it's it's easier to kind of um apply that to different things that he asks us to do but ultimately, all the rules per se, you know, that God has placed on our lives, they're only there to help us pursue him. You know, he's, he's not trying to just, you know, not let you live a good, fun life. Everything that he calls us to do is for a reason. Um, with that, I want to jump into the next section um, talking about our, inten our intentionality with God. Like I said, our actions impact our relationship with God so, so much. So a few questions to kind of ask yourself are, number one, are you in constant conversation with the Lord? This is a super easy way to, you know, grow your relationship with God is just to talk to him. He's, you know, he's this, you know, amazing, amazing God, but he's also a friend. So just, just talk to him. Um, and number two, are you reading his word? God's word is the only truth that we can really cling to. So if you're not reading his word, then your relationship with him is not going to be as great. And then finally, are you loving others the way he wants you to? Like I said, you know, God intends for us to love others like he loves us. And so that's something to really think about when, you know, you're thinking about your actions and how that's going to uh, affect your relationship with him. 
bottom line, we have to pursue God every day. Um, if you make him the center of your life, you're going to be super intentional about all the other little things, you know, in your life. Um, like I said, your purpose is to live for God and to glorify him in everything you're doing. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about why we struggle to live intentionally because it is hard, you know, that this life we're living is not easy. And especially without God, you know, you, you can't get anywhere. So the first reason why I think a lot of us struggle to live intentionally is that we're pursuing things of the world, uh, pursuing things of the flesh. Uh, you can't pursue the flesh and be intentional in your relationship with God. This includes, you know, partying, drinking to get drunk, uh, hookup culture, worshiping idols, whether that be food, your body image, fitness, social media, people, um, just any of these things, it, it takes away from your relationship with God and it ruins that intention, that good intention of living for him. Uh, something I want to touch on a little bit is the term YOLO. I, I don't like this term. I understand, you know, how it can kind of be misconstrued in society, but believers live twice. You don't only live once, you know, so your decisions matter. And of course we have a forgiving God and, and he wants you to, you know, keep coming back to him even, even when we sin because we do, but having intention with, you know, the way we live our life will affect everything, you know? So I think another thing to think about is when we're pursuing things of the world and focusing on building a legacy. And it's hard, man, because our world pushes us to be successful and, you know, to make a name for ourselves. But the only name that we need to think about is Jesus. Um, I love the song Only Jesus by Casting Crowns. I was actually just listening to it. It came on. Um, and it's just super, super important to realize that we don't need to leave a legacy. Our, our legacy is Jesus. And so if we're pursuing him and just trying to build a life for him and not for us, then that's going to, that's going to make a huge difference in our relationship with him. The second reason why we struggle to live intentionally is that we're not putting our identity in Christ. You know, if we're partying, we're, a lot of times we're drowning our doubt and insecurity with alcohol. Um, if we're hooking up, we're finding identity in others, not Jesus. And worshiping idols, we're saying that God's not enough and putting our identity in temporary things. And truthfully, the only, you know, identity that's ever going to fulfill us is Jesus. Um... And the last one I want to talk a little bit about is that we fear sacrifice. I, this, this one was straight from Jesus because I haven't even really thought about this in a sense of, you know, intention with God, but faith requires sacrifice. Faith requires you to say, you know, when your friends or, you know, people that you are around are saying, Hey, let's go out on Friday night, you know, and, and party it up. Faith requires you to say, you know what, I'm going to spend the night in with God, you know, that, and that's hard. That's really, really hard because of all the pressure of the world, but we can't fall victim to the evil of the world. We, we can't just be Sunday Christians. I, I am very guilty of, you know, just, just spending Sundays you know, worshiping God, but then Monday morning, I forget to read my Bible. You know, that, that kind of stuff is so, so damaging to our relationship with God because we have to be pursuing him constantly and publicly. That's another really important thing. Um, as a Christian, tell others about your faith, you know, tell others about Jesus because when, when we're pursuing him and helping others pursue him, we're only going to get closer. Um, I mean, G Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. All we have to do is have faith. You know, if, if God hadn't sent Jesus to die on the cross, we would be living in a world where our sins determined our fate. And we're so, so lucky that that's not how it is. But we do have to have faith in God and, and just live for him um, to be able to take advantage of that sacrifice. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, adversity and hatred. Um, 
I actually just heard a new song um, that I hadn't heard before called Stand by the Newsboys just the other day. Um, and they kind of ask, you know, when, when there's a cost, are you going to choose Jesus? And we have to be super intentional with that in saying, you know, when, when it's not the popular opinion, are you going to run to God? Or are you going to go with the flow and, you know, choose, choose the fun stuff? Um, so yeah, that's, that's about all I have for that. Um, so last thing I want to talk about is our intentionality with relationships. And this is, this is interesting. Um, I, I have been reading the book Single Dating Engaged Married by Ben Stewart. I've been working through it pretty slowly, um, really just trying to take it all in. Um, it's a great book. I would definitely recommend it, especially for romantic relationships, which is something that I think isn't talked about as much as it should be because it's a really, really tricky topic for Christians. Um, but I, I want to talk about a little bit, some, some tidbits of the book, um, and how we can just focus on being intentional in our relationships in a way that, you know, incorporates Christ. Um, to start off with, one of the biggest things that I love that Ben says is clarity shows intention. You should always initiate relationship, relationships with clarity. It's a sign of love and respect. And Proverbs twenty four twenty six says, An honest answer is a kiss on the lips. Um, another thing that Ben says is, Ambiguity is the seedbed for anxiety. So basically, if you're being vague you're you're not helping you know your your partner or potential partner out um and this is a huge deal in our society i cannot tell you enough like hanging out saying hey want to hang out versus we're dating those are two very different things in our society and it's so important to know you know where you're at with someone so that you can be intentional with how you are treating them and you know how you're incorporating them into your life and I love, love, love this. <laughs> ben says, ghosting is neither godly nor gracious. You have to be intentional with your relationship with others. And ghosting is just not cool. I mean, it does. that doesn't mean that, you know, if you're, interest, if you're not interested in someone that you should pursue them. Because that's absolutely not true. But being intentional with, you know, your words to them and how you know, you're acting around them, you don't want to lead someone on and then hurt them because, you know, you were never interested in the first place. God doesn't want that. Um, so I want to talk about a few things, a few ways to be intentional in a Christ-centered relationship. You don't want to, you know, be pursuing someone who believes in a higher power. You want to be pursuing someone who passionately pursues God. Um, because I think, you know, as a Christian, and, you know, I, I've dated a little bit, um, but it's so, so important to realize that your partner is not going to complete you. They, they aren't. Um, and that's not their job, and you, if you're putting that pressure on them, then that's not a good thing. Um, but they're going to compliment you. So if you're both pursuing God together... Um, that is going to help your relationship with each other. And it's also going to help your relationship with God. So it's, it's also important to, to think about kind of timing because I currently am single. And when I first became single again, I was really struggling with, you know, God, why, why don't I know, you know, why don't I have my person yet? You know, like every, every like college age girl probably, um, you know, we're super impatient with, you know, wanting, wanting to find our person, wanting to get married, wanting to start a family. But if you run to God with pure intentions, he is going to provide for you when it's time. His plan is greater than our plan. And trust me when I say this season of singleness for me has been the most rewarding and the most growth I have ever had in my life. Um, and a lot of times a season of singleness is a season to prepare you for, you know, for your long-term relationship. And 
I think it's really important to to get yourself right and your relationship with God right first before you start pursuing other people. Um, another really cool tidbit that I love, um, Ben talks about evaluation over infatuation. This does not make you judgy. I want to point that out. Um, but it does help you be intentional in your relationship is just evaluating a person's character and your compatibility instead of just being infatuated by, you know, someone showing interest in you or someone liking you. Um, that's, that's super hard. I, I am guilty. You know, I've been in situations where I've had, you know, guys that were interested in me, but maybe their intentions weren't pure. And I kind of thought, you know, well, no one else wants to be with me, so this must be okay. But in reality, our relationships with God were not in the same spot or not where they needed to be. And so that's, that's super important is to just evaluate someone and see, you know, where are they with God and where are they in their life to be a partner to you? And ultimately, we just have to pursue God first. Uh, we live in a culture that normalizes sexual impurity, um, but pure intentions are what God wants for us. And, you know, that, that means not having sex before marriage. That's, and that's it's such a tricky thing in our culture because it's so normalized. But God wants us to be intentional with, you know, all these different parts of a relationship so that when we ultimately do find the person we want to spend our life with, that that relationship can be as strong as it can be in Christ um, and together because of the intentions we have in, in every relationship in our life. Um, and now I want to touch a little bit on friendships. A lot of these things that, you know, apply to romantic relationships also kind of apply to friendships. You know, you want to be clear with your intentions with friends that, you know, maybe if you're not walking the same path that, you know, you just distance yourself, you know, that, that can be really hard, but sometimes it's necessary. Um, and I think something that I've really had to think about is not changing for society. I personally, you know, in high school, I, I started out with quite a few friends and then as I grew, I kind of realized it's way better to have less friends that are way better for you than a bunch of friends that don't really care about you and, you know, aren't caring for God. So, Guard your heart, be honest, loving, and kind, um, but also smart about who you choose to spend your time with. Um, ultimately, we just need to pursue God and lead others to God. And, you know, I, I would rather lead someone to God than to me. So when you're, you know, you're pursuing friendships, um, it's important to just make sure that you are leading them to God and not to you because you just want them to be your friend, you know? Um, something that was said at another one of my devotionals the other day in my, my B3 tribe um, is bad company corrupts good character. It is so important to, you know, think about who you're spending your time with. And, you know, that's that's not to say that we should judge people that aren't like us um, or, you know, be unkind to people who don't know Jesus because truthfully that's when we need to be the most kind to, you know, bring them to God. Um, but just, just be intentional with who, who you let in your life because, you know, certain people are, are just not, not good for you and are not going to help you in your relationship with God, which is also really important. So that is all I have for this uh, topic today, but I just want to say thank you if you're listening. I really hope that this impacted you. Um, I just know that God has has really been a change, changing my perspective on a lot of things lately, and I just want to share that with you. Um, I'm going to pray for us real quick, and then I hope you have a great rest of your day. All right, dear Jesus, um, I just ask that you speak to each person listening to this in, in the way that they need. And God, I just pray that you help us be intentional with our words and intentional with our relationship with you, our relationship with others. Um, just, just help us look to you 
when we're, you know, questioning certain things in our lives. And, and Lord, I just pray that we turn to your word before anything else. Um, help us just not, not listen to, to the world and to listen to you. And God, I just hope, I hope that each person listening to this, um, can just be touched by these words that you put on my heart and I just pray I just pray that you 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 know you speak to them through me um I just I just want to be a vessel for you Lord um so please just protect everyone listening to this video um help them pursue you God and and just love others intentionally we thank you and we praise you and love you amen all right I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Um, if you're interested in talking to me more about, you know, this topic or if you have other topics you want to chat chat about, um, my Instagram is chatwith.nat. Um, my DMs are always open if you have any questions or just need someone to talk to. So um, also check out my blog, chatwithnat.blog, um, for, for more info. I'm so happy that I got to, you know, chat a little bit with you and have a great day.